Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm uh, Douglas Croker, billed as Green Party member, which is correct, but uh, maybe also useful just to let you know that I'm a member of uh, the Enfield Alliance Against the Cuts, just up the road. Next part. Um, <clears throat> I chose my T-shirt today carefully. Uh, the colour is red. Um, I just got myself as an old lefty who gets the green agenda. And it also has a slogan on it saying 350.org. If you don't know what that is, please ask me a question later on. Um, we've had a number of speakers already today and uh, I've heard very many interesting things. And I'm actually encouraged by the fact that there, there seems to be a lack of reticence about proposing policies which we should be arguing for. Because, you know, we are anti-cuts, of course. We are anti-austerity, of course. And it's interesting that the organisation, the umbrella organisation, uh, is called the, today it's the North London People's Assembly Against Austerity. The anti-cuts term is used, and I understand why it's used, but I am actually not against all cuts. This will be a familiar list, but let me just remind you of it. Trident. Let's cut. Trident. There's a session on that. Yep. Um, let's also, this is an easy one, cut big finance. Yeah. Big advertising. You know, what's that doing to our kids? What's that doing to us in terms of promoting consumer capitalism? We could do with less of that. Um, Oh, Ben Lemmings. Oh, Ben. Sorry about the noise. <laughs> <laughs> Do come in. Um, big auto, big fossil fuel, and I had a couple uh, which I'll, I'll let you dwell on. Big bling, and also big tourism. The last time I was in an aircraft was ten years ago. Ask me a question about that later too, if you like. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff going on just now which needs to stop. There's a lot of stuff not going on just now which we need to start initiating. And one, one, of, my, one of the easiest ways for me to, to help sum this up and transmit the message to you, I just happened to come across it um, in the last couple of days. Um, we're bombarded by stuff from YouTube these days, but there's something out there called Climate Radio. Climate Radio, yeah. Google it, it will come up. And they've got an hour-long radio programme with a bunch of interviews uh, from people in the field who will tell you what their views are on dealing with the climate crisis and the economic crisis and, and all the rest of it. It references the IPCC report, which Suzanne mentioned. And of course, you know, um, that's terribly important stuff. And one of the little soundbitey things I like to remember on that is that we are in today, not some point in the distant future, we are in today a planetary emergency, a planetary emergency. Uh, CO2 emissions are rising, we need to get them back down to 350, Bill McKibben and James Hansen tell us. Um, there's an interview with a certain Natalie Bennett in this radio program. You may know that she's the leader of the Green Party. And the reason, reason for that is perfectly straightforward. Green Party policy is um, very directly targeted at the task that we need to address climate change and global warming. At the same time, of course, and this is terribly important, the solutions we should be pursuing to deal with the climate crisis will also, will also let us deal with matters of social justice and jobs and so on as per the one million jobs which Suzanne mentioned. Uh, other people have been talking about this too. Let me just wave this at you. There's an outfit called the Green New Deal Group. Uh, have anyone heard, has anyone heard of the Green New Deal document as of 2008? Okay, that's worth Googling. Published under the um, auspices of the New Economics Foundation. 2008 they started off with the Green New Deal document. Followed it up very rapidly and this has been lost sight of with a document called The Cuts Don't Work. Five years on from 2008, they produced this, 
a national plan for the UK from austerity to the age of the Green New Deal. And there, there they set out the problem and they set out a whole range of, of solutions. So they talk about uh, a transaction tax. They talk about buying back the PFI deals, uh, uh, deals which are, you know, that would be expensive, but it's, even, it's going to be even more expensive letting them run on into the future. So we're not actually short of ideas, not actually short of policy proposals. Um, the difficulty, of course, for us is that who is going to implement these? Um, the current government is, well, I, I, I don't really know what to say about them. Um, the opposition is uh, um, disappointing. Um, it, it's sometimes said that there is only uh, one MP in Parliament who is the true opposition. I'll let you guess her name. Um, I've been asked to wind up. So we, we, do, we do have a problem as to who is going to make all these changes, and this is obviously part of the solution. One, finally, finally, one, one thing that the agenda, the agenda develops as time goes on, and one thing we really do need to be addressing is this fixation, fixation with traditional economic growth as measured by GDP, gross domestic product, or similar measures. It's not good because it seems to imply a growth in CO2 emissions. Unless we can pursue prosperity, and I'm referencing Tim Jackson's book, <coughs> Prosperity Without Growth, unless we can pursue prosperity, which is good for all of us, without a growth in CO2 emissions, we have got a major problem. And I, I think I'd better stop there. Thank you very much.